Goblin expansion. Johnny from Tabletop Tubidor here, and we are all getting excited about this. We got this pamphlet in the base game of Labyrinth, the board game, and since Tabletop Tubidor posted the video of unboxing this game, we gave you a sneak peek of the goblins, and we've had heaps of positive feedback and excitement over that. So we're doing a giveaway to, to uh, keep that excitement up. I've drawn a, a kind of a one-off illustration of the expansion itself and in the same style as all the artwork and that I did for the board game and all you've got to do is share the video and in a couple weeks from now we're going to randomly select someone who shared and this could be in your gaming room uh, until then let's take a look at the goblins for the expansion of the labyrinth board game so it was never the original plan to actually have an expansion it was hoped by by river horse but they wanted to keep the price down with the core box for the fans and have the five main favorite characters in there. While I was waiting for some feedback and stuff, I sculpted this guy because I, I was having so much fun sculpting these characters and once I got to the end of five, I didn't want to stop. And I sculpted this guy and then I sculpted this guy. And initially they were really just for me and my gaming table and I sent them, I sent photos to River Horse and they got really excited and they had discussions within the company and they got back to me and said, okay, let's do five. Let's do five goblins for the goblin expansion. And I was thrilled because for me, so you can't have labyrinth without the goblins. These two I picked out initially, since I was just doing it for me, as my favorite characters. These guys personally showcase the wide range of what Brian Froud designed for that movie. Did you see it? And this is the, that doesn't even start with I wish we learn that rubbish. It was exciting to hear they wanted a cavalry unit because Alessio Calvator, who designed this game, also designed the Lord of the Rings Games Workshop game. I've been collecting and painting that since I was about 14, 15 years old. Um, and so, you know, I designed these with wargaming in mind in the sense that you've got the brute, which is the big guy. You've got just the little kind of pawn infantry unit, which is the small guy. You've got sort of like a lengthy spear or kind of a double based ranged weapon which is the nipper stick guy you've got the this the ranged weapon like crossbow bow and arrow artillery which is the artillery uh, you know goblin and then you've got the cavalry when I went on to do the cavalry guy this uh, this was the most trouble which is the same thing as saying the most fun that I've had and having to make a sculpture that will come out in one mold that's not gonna cost a lot more money down the line of having to assemble it at a factory or to get the, the, the customer themselves to assemble it because some people just want to take the miniature out of the box and, and play this um, I enjoy model making the miniatures myself but sometimes it's just nice to pull the guy out of the box like you can with the labyrinth game and play and that's done because I I worked every pose into being able to come out of one mold but the cavalry guy who's got a thin lance and thin arms and thin legs and lots of hair and pointy bits sticking in all sorts of directions. I mean, if you hold this up to an image of the film, you can see where I've cheated proportion where I can and cheated undercuts where I can with fleshy bits and saddles and elbows and hair and a droopy flag and, and stuff like that. I was always sculpting to what the miniature was going to look like, not what the three up was going to look like. The only character that I was told to do, as opposed to the ones that I was able to choose, because River Horse and Henson's were just so open on the creative side of this game, which is just such a, a blessing uh, as a sculptor and illustrator. They asked for this guy. They wanted artillery, and I can I can see why because. As you play the board game, you'll notice you've got to get through different levels of goblins to get to Jareth and his castle, and they wanted to keep escalating, like the film does. Oh man, it just gets worse and worse and worse. And so you get like machine gun dude here, and um, there's no images uh, of the back of him, so uh, I had to interpret what, what I thought the back of him would look like. Um, so I, I kind of kept it simple. I'm not here to redesign anything. Uh, Brian Froud and the the team behind Jim Henson's Labyrinth have already done the single greatest job in cinema history of designing this world. I just feel very privileged to have a chance to do my best to try and capture that uh, for things this big. So like all sculptures in the Labyrinth board game, these characters were done in three ups, which is this big because they get three times smaller, and in a firm plasticine that I use as a sculptor of monsters and stuff at Weta Workshop uh, where I work and it's something 
that I'm familiar with and see plasticine unlike clay or, or other products it never hardens or, or dries so you can work into it for months and it means you have to mold it which is an expensive process but it's what grants you the the detail that you can get in a, in a sculpture I, I could build up a form and twist his head that way move his arm that way you know I kind of built him up in almost a sausage stick figure and then I repositioned him and for the cavalry unit that was so important to have that flexibility because it was a real puzzle making this guy work as one piece and, and hiding where you'd expect under undercuts and, and, and gaps to be. Um, so plasticine was a real boon there. And as you can see, his, the, the eyeballs are just uh, little plastic molds of what were steel ball bearings. And ball bearings, as you can see from a lot of these guys, are an important part of the sculpting process because what you've got to remember again is that these are relatively crude sculptures that capture the shapes to be miniaturized so rather than spending each time on every little bolt and, and stuff like that I've uh, just got a whole different series of shapes and sizes not shapes they're all round but sizes of ball bearings and I've made a little nook and then I've pushed the ball bearings in and you can see when it comes out you know it's not really a ball bearing anymore it's a little it's a little rivet um, which adds some sharpness to what's otherwise quite a soft sculpture you can see these guys are falling to pieces and you can, uh, because they've been pulled out of the mold and once sculpts come out of the mold they're quite useless but that doesn't matter because that enables you to produce uh, multiples of it like that but that also means you've got to make sure that River Horse and Henson's have locked off the design because you've got to start again otherwise if after the mold they say we want to change but they were great with that they didn't want any changes um, after the fact um, and you can see here where his foot's come off that I've just used florist wire uh, as an armature and see how that you can easily bend that and so I made a little stick figure of this guy put him into a, 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 po a pose I thought was good which is just neutral anyway but. and then we've got this guy uh, who was always my favorite character my, my favorite goblin anyway as a kid watching this film and if you read some of the sketches of Brian Froud's original concept sketch of this guy in, um, in the book compilation of, of, of goblins that uh, he wrote with, with Terry Jones there's some fun little side notes about how this guy is actually the mayor of Goblin City and I certainly think that every time I watch the film um, and it's funny because he's portrayed as really the dimmest of the goblins in the movie um, but he also seems quite lovely and he's also in Sarah's room dancing uh, at the end of the movie uh, which just makes him even sweeter um, I'd vote for him that is the goblin expansion for the labyrinth board game I hope they got everyone uh, more excited about it uh, thanks for watching be sure to share the video and get in for a chance to win this for your gaming room and uh, until then, happy gaming, stay out of the oubliette, and mind your step.